Hello Unity fans! At the end of our previous video, for which the link is in the top right and in the description below, we were at a position where we had complete animation and action cycles for both woodcutters and stonemasons. This includes the functionality to force them to approach their cabins from the correct direction, to prevent them from walking through the walls. But our unit script could only handle one type of unit at a time. We had to choose whether we wanted woodcutters or stonemasons. Today we will expand on our scripts such that any number of different resource gatherer unit types can be handled by one unit script. Up until now our unit script had its various speed parameters as well as resource type hard coded as constants, so we could only have one speed and one gatherer type on our map. We now change these to public variables which we will populate when the unit gets created, and which will be dependent on the different characteristics of the different gatherer types. We also supplied it with only one array of unit prefabs from which the unit model was chosen, so they all had to be of the same type, say all woodcutters. We had to change it manually when we switched from woodcutters to stonemasons. Of course, we'd like to have both types of units on the map at the same time, and still more unit types later on. So we have to find a way to make the choice of unit type dynamic, and allow the easy and seamless addition of extra unit types as we progress, without being dependent on hard-coded parameters. We start off by defining an enum for gatherer type, like we did for resource type. We'll only be looking at woodcutters and stonemasons in this video, but I've added on farmers, so these units at least have some prospect of having a decent meal one day. And, just as we had a class containing all the information or specifications for each resource type, we add a similar class for gatherer type. We link the gatherer type with the resource such a gatherer will harvest and cater for all the speed parameters that we had in the unit script. We include a counter that we'll use to cycle through the different prefabs for the gatherer type when more than one is added to the map, so that we can have units with some variation. We include a constructor to initialize our variables when defining different gatherer types. Now, again similar to where we defined our different resources and their characteristics, we can define our different gatherer types and their characteristics. Note that we can specify different speeds and position buffers for different gatherer types. So let's make the stonemasons slightly slower. Also, since their pickaxe animation lunges forward a bit, where the woodcutter swings from the side, we also need it to stand slightly further back when breaking the rocks. We can now define different gatherer type characteristics, but we still need to supply a list of prefabs for each gatherer type to use as visual models. I've created a prefab linker script, which I've added onto the hex grid game object. It defines a class gatherer prefab, which contains the indication of which gatherer type it is, and a list of prefabs to use as visual models. We have a serialized instance of this called all gatherer prefabs, and we can populate this on the hex grid game object for our different gatherer types. We only populate it for woodcutter and stonemason for now, and add the four prefabs for each type which we've been using all along. All that remains is for us to adapt the createUnit method to cater for different types. We previously spawned a unit by pressing U on the keyboard. We will now adjust this to spawn the woodcutter on pressing U and the stonemason on pressing I. We need to now pass a gatherer type to the createUnit method, and it needs to do some extra work to determine which gatherer type specification entry it needs to use for this unit. It achieves this by looping through the prefab groups until it finds the one that equals the unit to be created, saving the position as index. It then uses this index to pick out the correct specifications when selecting a prefab as a visual model, and we also pass this index on to the addUnit method. Note that we add one to it, since we don't have prefabs for the gatherer type none, so we have one more gatherer type than we have prefab lists. The addUnit method now uses this index to set the speed, position buffer and resource type of the unit. Note that we still have separate speed variables for each unit instance. They do not keep using the gatherer type's speed values after being set initially. 
We purposefully do this to allow us to adjust these speeds for individual units later on, should it be required. So, we could have some game mechanics that make a unit move slower or faster, and the functionality is already in place to affect it. And that's all we need. We can now populate our map with both woodcutters and stonemasons, and they coexist correctly with all the functionality we've built in for them before. For example, all the units on the map will honor the invisible wall constraints placed around all of the cabin hexes. So nobody will be walking through any of the cabins on the map, since the Pathfinder won't try to take them into the dead end of the cabin except when it's their own and they need to drop off resources. Also note how the stonemasons walk slightly slower, since we've reduced their speed by 25%. Finally, note that I've created two different buildings for the two different gatherers with some visual clues included, and that the rocks now also have some grass around it. These prefabs can be improved in many ways to make the visuals more appealing, but they will suffice while we're still focused on the functionality for now. We can now easily add any number of different gatherer types, as long as we provide its specifications, some prefabs to use as visual models, and we make sure the unit script knows how to handle its action and animation sequence. Please consider subscribing and stay notified if you'd like to continue on this journey with me. Goodbye!